Good morning. Um, it is, yeah, my real cred comes from being a board member of the Internet Education Foundation, and I just want to give a nod to Tim Lorden, who I don't think has been recognized enough yet this morning for keeping this together on the eve of a snow day and starting the morning out so well. So thank you, Tim. So I am uh, privileged to introduce the next keynote speaker, FCC Commissioner Jessica Rosenworcel. Many of you know her from her time as Senior Communications Counsel on the Senate Commerce Committee, as well as her tenure at the FCC, uh, most recently for uh, serving as legal advisor for Commissioner Cops. Uh, people come to commissioner positions at the FCC and high positions at the FCC from a variety of ways, and I just want to say how heartening it is to see someone who was such a leading figure as an expert in the agency come back to lead it, so I'd like to recognize that. Jessica's also been um, a, a leader uh, within the commission and in the government of freeing up more spectrum for innovation, for new services to access the internet. And most recently, she's been championing uh, identifying unlicensed spectrum, in particular 100 megahertz of spectrum at the 5 gigahertz band, which is the most significant movement on unlicensed spectrum in, in a decade at least. Uh, the fact that she has been such a leader at the FCC is no surprise, as um, during her confirmation hearing, Senator Rockefeller commented about Jessica as he introduced her that she is calm, which is no small thing. She's brilliant, and she never loses an argument. Um, so those are, those are three important qualities. And on a personal note, I would just like to thank Commissioner Rosenworcel for her um, very constructive, very calm, very balanced uh, orientation towards a lot of the international issues that have been going on. I think she's been a wonderful partner and ally in that. So with that, it's my pleasure to in introduce Commissioner Rosenworcel. There are steps. Good morning. So Washington really rolled out the white carpet today for State of the Net. Glad to see that you're all here and that you're willing to face a slightly fierce winter storm in our nation's capital. So thank you to Tim and thank you to State of the Net for what you do and to the Internet Education Foundation for holding this forum to talk about important internet policy issues. Now, up front, I think I need a disclaimer. As a commissioner at the Federal Communications Commission speaking at the State of the Net conference, I'm going to defy some expectations today. I am not going to talk about network neutrality. <laughs> I support network neutrality. But no matter where you stand on that issue, I suspect you'll agree with me that this issue does not lack for attention. So I want to upend expectations and talk about something else. I want to talk about something that warrants more attention and deserves more support. I want to talk about Wi-Fi. We need more Wi-Fi. We need more Wi-Fi because it is an essential on-ramp for internet connectivity. We need more Wi-Fi because unlicensed spectrum is our best bet for wireless innovation. And we need more Wi-Fi because in a world of constant connections, it is responsible for billions of dollars of economic activity and growth but I'm getting ahead of myself. So before talking about how we can have more Wi-Fi in more places, I want to tell you a story. I want to dust off a story from the FCC archives and tell you about the time the agency rewrote the book on spectrum policy and laid the groundwork for modern Wi-Fi. So roll back three decades and to help you out, Here's some color. Back to the Future was on the big screen, and Swatch watches were the smartwatches on our wrists. 
Commodore meant computing and compact discs were emerging as the be all end all future of music. It was a long time ago. But three decades ago, just like today, the FCC was tasked with managing the airwaves. So the agency had lots of licenses for radio, for television, for satellite services, and a bunch of other things. But not all of our airwaves were occupied. We had a handful of obviously underused frequencies. These were the airwaves that had been designated for industrial, scientific, and medical uses. But the services we imagined were going to develop in those bands, they never quite did. In part, because under FCC rules, they had to contend with interference from some widely used devices that were growing really popular three decades ago, microwave ovens. In fact, so little was happening in this spectrum, these airwaves were known as garbage bands. The conventional wisdom was that they were just junk. They were scraps of spectrum where the demand for wireless services were just going to be limited. But this is where that story, it takes an interesting turn. The FCC decided to think differently. We decided we could do more than just dismiss these bands as junk. So we decided to abandon the traditional practice of providing licenses to single operators to control in specific bands for specific purposes. And to do this, we decided we needed to ask experts for some big, bold, and creative ideas. And once we got started, the questions they multiplied really, really fast. What if the FCC decided that they didn't have to dictate what technologies use these underused frequencies? What if instead the agency just set some basic technical parameters? And what if we gave the public access to these airwaves? That would mean instead of thinking about spectrum like a license or a lease on a property, we would think about it like a highway where if you obey the basic rules of the road, you can do things and go places. So in FCC circles, this was some edgy stuff. It was a move away from command and control spectrum policy. It was a different way to think about interference and optimizing our airwaves. And to their credit, my predecessors at the FCC didn't only ask questions, they took action. As a result, three decades ago, the FCC designated its first significant swaths of unlicensed spectrum in these so-called garbage bands. And you're probably seeing this coming, but this is the spectrum where Wi-Fi was born. In time, with the development of the 802.11 standard, we turn this wireless junk into gold. Because today, our lives are not only dependent on wireless connectivity, they are deeply dependent on unlicensed spectrum. And Wi-Fi is an enormous part of that. Wi-Fi is how we get online. In fact, more than half of us have used public Wi-Fi and more than 60% of us rely on Wi-Fi at home. Wi-Fi is how our carriers manage their networks. In fact, today nearly one half of all wireless data connections are offloaded onto unlicensed spectrum. So it may not be intuitive, but unlicensed spectrum helps manage the flow of traffic on licensed airwaves. And Wi-Fi is how we foster innovation. That's because the low barriers to entry for unlicensed airwaves makes them perfect sandboxes for experimentation. This is where we tinker. It's where we can explore new ideas for an internet-enabled future at low cost. 
Wi-Fi is also a boon to the economy. The economic impact of unlicensed spectrum has been estimated at more than $140 billion annually. And that's only going to grow. I think this is good stuff. I think we need to keep it coming. We need to make Wi-Fi a priority in spectrum policy. It needs to move from the back bench to policy prime time. So here are three ideas to make that happen. First, let's commit to finding more spectrum for Wi-Fi and unlicensed activity. As Rebecca mentioned, last year the FCC freed up 100 megahertz of spectrum in the 5 gigahertz band for unlicensed use. So far, so good. But next year, the FCC has an opportunity to bring more unlicensed spectrum to market through the smart use of guard bands in the 600 megahertz band. We need to follow through and just do it. Second, let's take a fresh look at how Congress accounts for our airwaves. Traditionally, the legislative process has overlooked the value of unlicensed spectrum and favored licensed spectrum. That's not because of some rancorous partisan divide, and it's not because of some unsavory battle between big industries. No, it's because when the nonpartisan staff at the Congressional Budget Office does their job, they assign value to spectrum when it is licensed and sold at auction. So bills that direct the FCC to sell licensed spectrum at auction get high grades, while legislation that creates more spectrum for Wi-Fi gets low marks. I think this accounting method is outdated because it fails to take into account the more than $140 billion in economic activity unlicensed spectrum creates each year. That economic activity can grow if we find a new way to put Wi-Fi on the books. So I think it's time to develop a multiplier that accounts for the billions of dollars of activity that unlicensed spectrum can generate in the economy. Because making small accounting changes could be the ticket to bigger Wi-Fi opportunities in the future. Now third, let's make clear that we will not tolerate malicious or willful interference with Wi-Fi. That's actually already the law under the Communications Act. But last year, a bunch of hotels banded together and filed a petition with the FCC. They asked the agency to bless their ability to block hotel guests from using their own Wi-Fi connections under the guise of network security concerns. There are other ways to address legitimate network security concerns, but this is a bad idea. We've all been hotel guests. I am sure there are some road warriors in this room. So you know, Wi-Fi is the difference between working in the comfort and privacy of your room and being relegated to that windowless business center. It's the difference between streaming the content of your choosing and being stuck with the hotel's on-demand selection. It's the difference between seamlessly getting your work done at a conference and being saddled with special fees and charges just to connect. In other words, Wi-Fi gives us choices. And those choices matter well beyond hotel rooms. We live in a wireless world built on constant connectivity. Having more ways to connect in more places makes us stronger and will help grow our economy as the internet grows less visible precisely because it becomes a part of everything we do. So let's not let this petition linger or create any uncertainty, and I hope my colleagues at the FCC will work with me to dismiss it without delay. So, there you have it. I think the state of the net owes a lot to the state of wireless connectivity. 
And I think the future of wireless connectivity will be stronger if we make some more room for more Wi-Fi. Thank you. <laughs>